Welcome back to the Modern Super League. Nathan Storer here with Jesse Robkin. And we just finished a really awesome match playing Black Red Evoke against Four Color Beanstalk. And um, Jesse, tell me a bit about how you feel about that match. Um, yeah, I felt, honestly, I felt pretty representative. Like the, the match you won, you sort of completely over you answer i i just like put a thing into play every turn and you answered it every turn and then eventually you landed a ring um and then the game i won um i it was like very scrappy i had you on the back foot most of the time um stripped your answers from your hands with like thought season and stuff um and then had the blood moon when you you had to decide between omnath or the ring and i think playing the ring makes sense because um, that way you don't die to a removal spell um, but i had that blood moon and then game three was um, a very weird game that was like weirdly close, despite neither of, like neither of our hands were really very good. Um, well, my hand would have been would have turned into a good hand with one more land or a grief off the top on turn one, um, but it was a maybe it was a very borderline keep. Um, but I figured with you taking a mulligan, having double thought sees seemed um, worthwhile. Though by the time you mulligan to, to five, I wished I had taken a mulligan. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So for those who were in chat, we have the exclamation point grief giveaway that we did. And for those who don't know, that was a special avatar that is given away for people who attended the Las Vegas event this past weekend. And so actually, this is going to be the last time that you can get this avatar. So you should definitely... Be spamming your exclamation point griefs in, in chat at the end of the round. Uh, special shout out to Daybreak who found a few extras tucked away at the warehouse and it's just letting us give them away. But this is the last chance you have available to get them. So definitely give us your griefs in chat so that you can also be someone who represents grief on Magical Mind. But right now we have a pretty exciting match upcoming. We have Aspiring Spike and he's going to be facing off against Young Dingo. This is the elimination round, but just for this week. So since we're in the winner's bracket, the losers, the people who get two losses over the course of today are moving down. And the two winners are going to be facing off in, in the top eight uh, in a few more weeks. So stay tuned for that. But right now we have the matchup. I think we have it ready. We have Black Red Evoke on the side of Dingo versus Aspiring Spike's really cool take on food. So, yeah. well, Spike, I believe, is quite confident about um, his side of the matchup. Obviously, uh, the White Splash put in a lot of work in my match against Spike, um, which Dingo did not bring. Um, so, I'll be curious to see um, what just more a traditional Rakdos deck, how that lines up against. Uh, the deck. It seems like if if um, Spike can get either Sa Saga or Asmo going, it gets really hard for Scam to win. Um, yeah, we almost saw that in your match, but I think the players are ready. So let's head down to their match, and uh, yeah, let's see who takes it down. All right. So looking at these opening hands, we He's see an action shot here. Yeah. Like you fetching. Bloodstained Meyer fetch on the stack. Usually that only means one thing. You're you're sitting there on the other side, you're thinking, okay, grief for fury, something's coming. But right now Dingo doesn't have either. It's just a ragavan. Yeah. Spike's hand, this Steel Seeker card seems pretty good in the matchup if it gets going, but does have two toughness, which means a pair of them can easily get cleaned up by a grief or by a fury. I mean, yeah, and, and the fact that spikes on the draw here means that this ragavan is going to put him under a ton of pressure almost immediately. Similarly to what we saw in your match, it's like if you get a ragavan on the play and you can start getting ahead on mana, it seems like spikes deck has a harder time catching up. But we'll see. I mean, the steel seekers can provide a ton of value, especially if he finds one of the value engines like Academy Manufacturer. Or some way of making food and getting this Asmo going. Oh, this this Fury is brutal. Yeah. So the Fury takes care of both creatures. No undying effect. Wow. This, this Dingo, is yeah, no working. time at all. Yeah. I would have been tempted to trade the like to attack first, because I don't think like if he blocks, you had that backup Ragavan, but um Yeah, I mean the nice part is in the, in the grief down. 
Dingo hit. Did he hit finale this turn? Is um, so finale can search for something or is oh, he just oh, okay, yeah. a grief this turn? So he could finale for like a second void walker, but I have to imagine grief is nope, they're doing for it. Yeah, finale kind of makes some sense, right? Because if you put another Dothy void walker in play, it means that there's no way that uh Spike's gonna be able to unlock the potentially cookbook comboing with the old chase daredevil and it's also just unblockable like the the spike deck really needs to be able to put up some sort of defense here and and the grief is still in hand so i kind of like this play and with this shock it is officially a turn two clock oh my god and there's another oh and, and plus you have the terminate to clear a blocker yeah this is just an absolute beat down i think it doesn't really matter here i might have wanted to see Fury pitching terminate, and then you can hard cast grief. That way, there's no way that you you have any issues going across the finish line. But it looks like it's a little too late for Spike to make a comeback. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with you. That would have been a slightly because at that point the card in your hand doesn't matter that much. Um... All right, going well, into that was a lightning fast game. That was yeah. very similar to my first game against Spike in a lot of ways. It almost seems like. The scam side is going to win the game extremely quickly and make the matchup look not very close. But when Spike's deck is doing its thing, it's going to be dragging the game pretty long. Um, two Engineer Explosives, a Hidetsugu, a K Command, and a Pithing Needle coming in from Dingo's side. And this time, Spike doesn't have to bring in three fourths of Vigor without any sto Stony Silence. So that's a pretty big advantage to not playing against your specific list that, uh, that he must be feeling good about. Yeah, definitely. And it looks like Dingo was trying to figure out how to get these Bowmasters out of his deck. Um, because they're not very good, but I don't... Yeah, I could bring in one Chalice for zero for Asmo. The problem with that is Finale for zero still gets the Asmo into play. So, yeah, I don't know. What do you think of just playing some Ragavans? Yeah, it's like... Yeah. I understand Ragavan has a weakness of in the late game, the Peregrine took and the Academy Manufacturer are going to prick it, but it does seem to me like turn one, it's still pretty nice and you can clear the wave for it. So I think I like the the two Ragavans that he brought in. Yeah, it's also red, which is pretty important. Yes. Uh, it looks like at the last moment he swapped it out for Shieldred, which I actually, because uh, I have two Shieldreds in my board too. And the problem with Shieldred is that it, it lines up so poorly against Asma. So it's great if you've blocked down the board, but if you haven't, then you're in some trouble. This hand is not... I might have been tempted to go to five for Dingo. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. From Dingo's side, I don't really think this hand's keepable. It's it's not particularly good at doing any angle of disruption or attack. And it seems to me like, well, if you oh draw grief, God. then your hand is very good. <laughs> well, uh, clearly he uh, he knew something we didn't. Yes. He's been practicing scam, and it shows. This is what a true expert would do on turn one. Yeah, so I guess you take... I think I would take the cookbook and the steel seeker here personally. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is like without any way of discarding this Asmo is not that effective. Like the one thing that Spike's hand has going for it is the goose allows him to cast any sort of three drop he draws. But I like your idea of taking the steel seeker and making sure that there's not an additional way of generating lands or value. Um, taking the Asmo is okay here, but there's not really any real discard outlet that can go along with the Asmo except a cookbook. So I think I, yeah. I'm not sure about that decision either. This Voidwalker does make the Steel Seeker a lot less scary because um, it's not getting the value out of the graveyard. But see, yeah. given that Spike drew another Asmo, um, which again, I knew was going to happen. Um, right. That's like the one right. thing that, that Dingo didn't consider. Right. And, and that might be a fatal mistake. I mean, not considering that there was an Asmo on top, but... Again, right now, Spike doesn't have any way of putting the Asmo in play. At least we know in two turns, the Saga can get a cookbook, which can put Asmo in play and maybe kill two creatures if we can make some more foods. But there's not a lot of time, and these Dothy Voidwalkers demand some sort of answer because it's already lethal next turn just with two unblockable Dothys. Yeah, this is a... He does get... The food can make a... Um... The Goose can make a food as well, so there's... At least, that's still, what, That's that puts him at two? Yeah. Um, so, the goose can make a food. 
and then you can crack the food after getting a forest. But and the goose could double block here if it wanted to. Oh, oh, or you can just make a construct and, and double sure, block. Yeah, that. double block that way. That works too. That probably makes more sense. Do you block? Yeah, I was gonna say, do you block with the these two and just kill the group? I guess you kind of have to. You're you're sort of priced into it at this point. Yeah. Well, but we're gonna get another blocking. voidwalker coming down, but this yeah. is I mean, Spike will have two cookbooks, one from the saga, one from the Asmo. Yeah, can he make enough? So he has to be able to get to five and kill two Dothy Voidwalkers somehow, which is pretty challenging here, right? Because we can like get a cookbook, discard something with the cookbook to cast Asmo. But I don't know. Yeah. I, the I, Heath I, can like, get another, can go get a gingerbread cabin. That's true. The gingerbread cabin is kind of huge here, yeah. But without another card in hand, let's see, you can only get a gingerbread true. cabin, go to one, get five foods, and then you don't have the last card to discard, right? Yeah, but this, so you can kill two things. The goose makes a mana, but can't also make, yeah, he's one food short. He yeah. played pretty quickly, but I think he maybe. There's some math that okay. Oh yeah, you can draw a card. Oh wow, that was huge. Wait, that was the only draw, maybe, right? We discard. Well, is that even enough though? No, no, you're right. It's not it enough. It makes food. well because Took makes two. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, and with Dothy's in play, we don't we don't even get the Oh you're right. Yeah, we don't even get the thing back. back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's right. Dothy has more text. Quick work made with these Dothy Voidwalkers. And and this matchup kind of seemed like it comes down to if the scam player has a really quick draw just gets to put a lot of pressure in the early stages. It's really hard for Spike Stick to beat those draws. But, like, maybe the average draws where you're facing off against, like, a lot less early pressure and you get your engine online, favor Spike. Like, that that turn really went from zero to, like, almost coming back on the spot. Like, with one more food in play, I think that game would have swung in Spike's favor. But And this is also after Dingo top-decked that Grief on turn one. His hand looked... Not nearly good enough to keep up with what Spike was doing uh, until that happened. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess the white splash was unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, so condolences to aspiring Spike, who is going to be playing in a different bracket. He's moving down in brackets, but the winner of your match upcoming versus Dingo is going to be the other person advancing to the top eight. How are you feeling right now? Are you nervous? Do you feel well prepared for the Black Red Mirror? Have you played I, much before? I've played a ton of the mirror. I've never played it with the white splash, which um, Leyline is such a powerful card in the mirror. So having the purges to answer that or just any scam creature seems valuable. Um, but also my mana will be a little more, a little less consistent. So um, I, I feel reasonably confident, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, feeling good. So if you're in chat, just a reminder, now's a great time. Let's put our griefs in chat in order to get our magic online exclusive promo this is the last chance you're going to have to get this promo and after today it'll no longer be available um coming up next yeah you're going to see a really nice match between jesse and young dingo and the winner of that will move on